Guys, I've downed this thing in a matter of weeks. I am going through it. I never eat stuff like this. I think I developed an addiction for cheese puffs. The only other person that eats a good amount of these is Lorenzo, but he's a baby, so a good amount for him ain't, ain't the same for everybody else. The longer I'm in here, the more cheese puffs I eat. I keep on telling myself, though, that once I'm done with this, I'm gonna go back to my diet, unless I buy another one of these. So Bay woke me up this morning. No, actually, she didn't wake me up. I got, I got up before her, but I was in the office, and as I was editing, doing my thing, she came up to me and said that she heard that barbers out here, maybe across the US, are trying to sign petitions to get back into the barbershop, to have it to where uh, you're cutting one client at a time, there's nobody in the lobby and all that. And I was talking to Dre, and the whole thing is, should we even go back right now? Is it even worth it? Is it too soon? I mean, there's a lot of people still getting exposed, and we all know that, you know, you can have it for two weeks, not even know it, spread it, and then possibly give it to somebody that can really be affected by it. You know, I think of like one of my clients, Lowe, that I, I showed in one of my videos, and he has a respiratory problem, and it's like, damn, do I really want to take it to where I could potentially, you know, get somebody sick? So it's that temptation of getting back to work so I can start making money, crush it on YouTube, but then I have that, that side of me that's like, nah, it's not even worth it. So that's just a quick conversation. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Enough is enough, though. Let's get into this haircut. Right here, we got my boy Jean. Shout out to all the Haitians. Sapase, Mapule, you know. Gene's the homie though. He he definitely has been a great client. I think I've been cutting him now for like two years. And he initially walked, well, like any other client, walked in and I didn't cut him the first time. Dre cut him. I want to get your opinion on something. Do you remember cutting Gene? Do I remember cutting him? Are you recording? Yeah. <laughs> Gene, cutting Gene is almost like trying to throw a punch against the sleep. <laughs> what? Like, you know how in a dream when you throw a punch, you just like, you just can't do it? He only cut him one time, right? Yeah, that's all it took. That's all it took? You had enough? I think he had enough. Oh. <laughs> in your defense, though, you're relatively new to the shop, too, though. Yeah, I learned, like, two months in. Oh, yeah, bro. Gene, Gene, that's that's a more advanced cut, for sure. Make sure you follow my boy Dre, cut it out, at his YouTube channel, even though it's been, like, two years he's uploaded something, but he's going to be uploading something pretty, pretty soon, right? Right? No. So, I, I think you guys get it. There's something about Gene that makes it difficult when cutting his hair. So Gene has these indents, some kinks. And so for him, I try to keep it dark in the areas where the kinks are so they're not too exposed or exposed at all. But depending on like the time of the year, he's wanted to kind of switch it and he'll throw it in there like, yo, let's go real low. And I got to look at him like, damn it, Gene, you know, we can't do that. And then we you know I t we find like a happy medium. We agree on a certain length. See, this is where you, when your job as a barber kicks in heavy. For a while, you gotta do what they want. But once that bond between client and barber is there, your word means a lot. Your decision, your point of view to them means a lot. Almost damn near everything. If you got them, if you have made your clients look good for a while. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna pay attention to what you say. On the so in this haircut, Gene wanted to switch up a few things. He wanted to go slightly lower around the areas that, around the challenging areas, basically. Like at first glance, you think that he's got dreads. He literally lets his hair just do its thing. Now, by letting his hair grow and do its own thing, it usually just locks up. It's always locked up, actually. Okay, so to start this haircut off, I'm chopping from the top, and I'm not doing too much. It was weird because I've never cut natural twisted hair. I've never really shaped it. Damn, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever cut anybody's dreads off. Now, I try to use that traveling guideline throughout the whole top of the head, and somehow figure out where this was gonna go. Towards the end, I just went ahead and just freehanded it and started shaping it up, because, I mean, I, I was looking ridiculous just trying to travel that, that damn thing. It wasn't going nowhere. It wasn't going nowhere at all.
Now guys, what I like to do to keep it dark around the areas and kind of give it a nice clean look is I give them a high taper. So for this video, the sides are gonna be a high taper, but the back, because the kinks go pretty low, I have to keep it a little bit lower on the taper. So high on the sides, low on the back. Now after we make our bald guidelines throughout the three sides, we're gonna pick up our number three and we're gonna start debulking, right? Now you wanna just go off the ridge of the head. I still wanna keep a, a, a nice square shape, especially with all the twists on the top. I wanna kind of, I don't wanna disconnect the haircut. I don't want it too short where it just drops. No, I just kinda wanna keep that shape. And that's why I'm going off the ridge with the number three. Okay, so after using the number three guard again, I came to the one and a half, and this is the the white one and a half guard that comes with pretty much all wall clippers, and it's a it's a bit of a flimsy guard. I like the premium better, but then again, why the hell would they make premium guards that aren't colored? Wall, I need y'all to make some premium colorful guards. Come on, wall, think about it. Okay, so right here, we're back to our guard all the way open, and uh, I'm just fading away. I'm working on that section. Sometimes that section could be a little bit challenging. That zero guard all the way open to close could be a bit of a hassle, and everything else is a little bit easier to deal with. So don't get frustrated that you get stuck there. Sometimes you gotta just move on. You gotta move on and you come back to it. It's almost like taking a test and you just work on the questions that you know best and come back to the harder ones. That's pretty much what goes on with hair in most cases, especially in the beginning. To all my new barbers, hey, I feel the pain. I feel the pain, stay in there. Okay, so as you can see, now we're tapering the back. Let's get a bit, little bit closer. As you can see, once we get a little bit closer, we gotta keep that taper low because there's no way you can make any fade, any fade work when you're dealing with kinks, AKA the rolls. If they try to get you to do it, you gotta, and this depends on how many rolls they have. If your client has like back to back to back, like mountains, of rolls and they're trying to get a fade, you gotta explain to them like, dude, it's not going to work. You're not gonna get a perfect fade out of this. Now if, if there's somebody out there that can prove me wrong, if you can do a fade with a client that has mountains of rolls, and I'm talking about mountains, I'm not talking about one or two, I'm talking about back to back to back to back, just let me know. 
Let me know. I want to see that. And this is where you guys really get to know Gene. Gene is like... Uh, Gene is tall. Gene is a big dude. He is built like an athlete and my man goes to sleep every time. He never misses the beat. I gotta nod him a little bit or I gotta do the hey, hey! I gotta do one of those two. It doesn't matter how many times I do it. Gene, you always go to sleep. Jay hits on the beat. Okay, so right here working on his sideburn leading to the beard. Now, let's get a little close up though. My man Gene has been picking at an ingrown hair. Clients, don't pick at your skin. And I, hey, I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. There's no happy ending when you pick your skin, guys. Now here, I'm taking down his mustache length with a number one guard. And afterwards, we're gonna start off this edge up section portion of the video. Here we go, one, two, three, hit it. Normally, when I'm working on somebody's mustache, I'll take down as much hair as I can with the trimmers. So then when I use the razor, it's not so rough on them. And I know there has to be better ways to do it. Um, like a steamer. I, I remember when I was in barber school, I used to love using the steamer and it would make any shave just a way smoother shave because you're opening up the pores. But in most cases, I don't, I, in all cases, in all cases actually, I never use a steamer at work. I don't have, we don't have one. I want to get one. I bought a hot towel warmer, but I don't like doing hot towel shaves. I admit it. I don't like doing hot towel shaves, but, but, but I, I do want to up my game on everything I can possibly do in this game. But then again, you just got to, I don't know. I just feel like there's barbers though that know their own lane, that know 
what they're great at and they stick to it and they do well they do amazing for themselves actually is it is it is it worth having to be the man on everything because another thing is the time it takes to learn it so it's like do you just find what it is that you like the most and be a master at it or do you just try to master everything and mastering everything takes we talking some time now we talking some time Here we are, the middle of the edge up. You have to start just stepping back and use the mirror. There was a time, and I'm gonna admit this, I don't think I've ever said this in any other video. There was a time I used to be scared of showing my clients the mirror. Like there was something about that that gave me anxiety. So like the edge up, I would try to kind of like sneak it and, and get them back to the side where they don't see themselves and you know, just work on it. That used to give me so much anxiety because it was like, oh, they're not ready. And because they're not ready, they're gonna think that's what I'm giving them. And it's just all these thoughts. It was crazy, crazy. I'm over that now. I do way better now because I just have more confidence when I cut. But yeah, that was real for me. That was real for me. I was feeling that. So if you felt that before, let me know in the comments below. And if you're feeling that now, stay strong. You get over it as you feel more confident with what you're doing. And that's gonna be shown not only in your haircuts, but in your personality and your character and the way you present yourself. It comes in time, I promise. Now, since we're getting closer to the end of the cut, I showed him after I edged him up how it was looking. And Gene came back and said, hey, I want it a little bit shorter on top. Can we go shorter? And of course, I went ahead and started chopping away. Now another reminder guys, uh, because I'm detailing, at this point I'm just gonna dry shave. I'm not gonna put more shave gel around his edge. It's just a little bit that I need to get. Everything else I use shave gel, so it's not like his skin is gonna get irritated from just tapping away in certain sections of the edge that I wanted to clean up. Uh, and that's why I did that. But besides that guys, I mean, that's the cut. Shout out to my boy Gene for staying strong, falling asleep a whole bunch of times, nodding his head. Gene, hey bro, what can I say? We're almost three years in, baby. Three years of finessing the cut. Three years of finding ways not to, uh, not to make you look bad. I'll tell you that, boy. Hey, I will say, Gene, you have made me get better 
at my craft because because when you come across challenging haircuts that's all they do they either make you or break you in most cases they'll make you so just keep that in mind if you have clients that have challenging haircuts the whole objective is to master it don't run away from it take it on you'll get better through time anyways guys i gotta admit this was dope I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hack out that like button, all right? We need some likes in this video. We, we, need, we need to grow this channel. 100K is around the corner. And uh, yeah, we, we trying to get there, all right? Before, before this quarantine's over, we got to get to 100K. All right, so rock out the like button. Make sure you share this video. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification button, and uh, I just picked my nose. Uh, I'll see y'all later. <laughs>